One of the most useful power tools out there is a table saw. But if you are looking for a table saw that is compact, powerful, has a strong motor, has an awesome rack and pinion fence, and it's not that pricey, such thing doesn't exist. It does. Huh? Have you checked the new table saw from Lotus? Why? It has all of those. You mean all the things that I just said? All of them? Yep. Really? Hi, I'm Sol, the creator behind Coffee Break PH, a channel dedicated to DIY and technology and totally not coffee related at all. This is the new 2000 watts table saw from Lotus with model number LTST 254 RPF Pro. It has a stronger motor, more compact and more portable than the previous model. And it has a rack and pinion fence that you can only see in the premium and expensive brands. And this is the foldable table stand compatible for this table saw. It has a model number of LTST 254S250. But take note, you have to purchase this separately. But before I show you what this beast can do, let me show you what are included in the boxes. The table saw stand is made from alloy steel, giving it the ability to be used in tough job site conditions yet it's light enough that makes it portable and easy to carry. For more information, you can check the included manual for more details. Included also is the warranty form. During the time I'm making this video, Lotus has 97 authorized service centers nationwide. So if you need to reach out to them, just check out the list behind the warranty form. Or you can reach out directly to Lotus by sending them a private message in their Facebook page. You'll see a small bag of nuts, bolts, and allen key. In a separate bag are the legs of the stand. Attach all four of them into the frame and secure them with the nuts and bolts. Then push the frame down to unfold the stand. Now we're done with the sand, let's go to the table saw. This new X1 combination blade is one of the new blades of Lotus. You need to purchase it separately. We have an improved bigger miter gauge a newly designed push stick, the manual and the warranty form, drive knob, washer and hex screw, dust port adapter, rip fence, blade guard. Then we have the table saw itself. Place the table saw on top of the sand and secure it with the clamps. One in front and one at the back. I'm pretty sure the stock blade is decent enough, but I really want to try the new X1 combination blade. Remove the table insert and get the two wrenches at the bottom. Use the wrenches to remove the arbor nut. Remove the blade and the outer flange. You may be familiar with the famous red blade that is well known internationally, but Lotus comes up with its own yellow blade. And you will be amazed how this blade performs. The blade includes two unattached reducer rings and one attached to the blade. Since the flash included in the table saw has a size of 25.4 millimeters, we have to remove the reducer ring of this blade. Insert the new blade but take note that the teeth should be facing the front of the table saw. Insert the outer flange and then tighten the arbor nut. Next thing we do is to calibrate the blade. Using the miter gauge, check the front and the rear teeth are aligned properly. Insert the wrench into the space between the blade assembly and the table. Using a flat screwdriver, rotate the adjustment screw to pivot the motor assembly. I can't find my screwdrivers as of the moment, so I use the wrench of my 3D printer. Another thing that you can do is reference the same tooth. Use the most trusted square that you have to check the squareness of the blade. Next thing we do is to calibrate the table insert. Using an allen key, adjust the four screws in the insert. I'm using the machine square to see if it's flush with the table. Since I use the left miter slot to calibrate the blade, I will also use it for the fence. Loosen the wing nuts and move the miter fence closer to the rib fence. 
push the miter gauge from front to end to see if the rib fence's distance is still the same. If it varies, use the Allen key to loosen the post in front and at the back. For this one, make sure you use the speed square to check the squareness. After, raise the blade and then move the fence closer to it. If you see that the marker is not pointing to zero, you can adjust it by using the Allen key. Loosen the bolt and adjust the marker. Tighten it when you're done. To attach the dust port adapter, just loosen the screw, then put the adapter in and put the screw back. The vacuum hose that I'm using has the same diameter with the opening of the adapter. So I 3D printed an attachment for this one. Since you're cutting wood, expect a lot of wood dust flying around. Aside from having your PPEs, make sure you have a decent dust collection system. For my case, I'm using a vacuum from Lotus that has a power socket in front. Switching the vacuum to the left will manually turn on the vacuum and switching it to the right automatically turns on the vacuum at the same time with the power tool you plugged in. And for this case, the table saw. For safety, always use work helpers such as push sticks and push blocks. Never place your hand close to the blade when you're operating this machine. This unit comes with one push stick, so you might need to create another one. Safety tip, when cutting, do not expose the entire height of the blade. Just raise your blade until a few millimeters of the tooth are showing. That's good enough. This unit comes with a paddle switch. It makes turning the machine off quickly by pushing the paddle with your hand or by using your knee. If all calibration and checking are done, it's time to make a cut. You can use the miter gauge for cross cuts. For rip cut, adjust the fence to your desired distance and secure it by pushing the rail lock lever. And always use push sticks and push blocks instead of your fingers. As you can see, I'm using two of them. The right push block pushes the workpiece forward while providing a downward push, while the left one pushes the workpiece against the fence. For bevel cross cutting, release the bevel lock lever and choose your desired angle. Use the right groove for this one and not the left one. It is safer because the blade is tilted away from your hands and the miter gauge. You can also do bevel rip cutting as well. Just make sure to use push sticks or push blocks for safety. And of course, you can also do miter cutting. Aside from push stick and push block, another helping accessory that you can have is a feather board. This helps in pushing the workpiece against the fence. Maybe you're wondering if this table saw and this X1 blade can cut hardwood? Here's a clean cut of a mahogany board. <laughs> okay, now let's talk about storage. The rip fence can be stored under the unit. Remove the fence from its in-use position, then extend the rails to the left. There are two posts on the left side that we are going to use. Latching the fence upside down to those two posts. Slide back the rails and then lock it in. For the miter gauge, you can store it under the back side of the unit. As you can see, the unit has rubber footings. Also, the left side of the table is reinforced, meaning we can store the table on the left side. To transfer the table saw, there are handles on the side of the tables that you can use.
There's also a dedicated handle on the right to carry the unit from the side. Then for the sand, just push down the middle part to fold it. Then secure it by hooking the clamp over the opposite side of the sand. For someone with a small workshop like mine, well, this is actually a garage. Owning a compact and portable table saw like this one is really beneficial. Not to mention the powerful motor that cuts work pieces like butter with an awesome rack and pinion fence that is so stable. And you can get this for a decent budget-friendly price and partner with an outstanding after-sale support. Ha! <laughs> What else can you look for?